What is poppin' squad? It's your boy just saying, and today we have ourselves a special video, and that is regarding Rogue 29. What is it? Do I have questions about it? I'm gonna answer all of them today for you guys, for the people who are curious. So basically, starting off, what is Rogue 29? Um, I've explained this in a prior video, but for the people who did not catch that, Rogue 29 is basically in the title. Um, you create a level 29 character, you go into DZ, and you do what you gotta do. So the way to do this, obviously, you create a new character. Most of you have level 30s um, maxed throughout your board so you have to get rid of one of your characters if you have four um, you go through your regular story mode um, depending on what you want to unlock for me I just went the medical route I just got the basically the talents and the skills I really use mainly and just did that just to be safe because um, you don't want to turn once you turn level 30 that's it you have to start a new character so um, the fastest way I did it is I got my medical wing done I got carried through Lexington to get me to like level 26 did all my encounters for the skills and stuff I needed and went into the DZ. Um, you are to never step out the DZ unless it's to reroll. You can't get Phoenix credits through these characters, so you're gonna have to farm those on another character, but everything else is pretty much the same. The only big difference that you're gonna immediately realize is that the grind is going to be um, an actual grind again. Um, the loot you see on the floor that's gold is important. Um, purples are still trash compared to the golds. Um, you want to try to have a full high-end build, which I will make a, a pretty much like a build video on pretty much what everybody's going to be running. Um, in Rogue 29, there are no classifieds. Um, I repeat, there are no classifieds. There's not even gear sets. So it's just high-end, just high-end weapons, no exotic, none of that fancy stuff. Just bare bones, what you're, um, what you've been used to way before you hit 30. So I've come across a couple problems in in Rogue 29 and I'm going to pretty much lay these out. Um one obviously uh it's it's gaining traction. Yes, you will run into people. Like I've started to run into a bunch of active servers and it's it's been cool. Sometimes it'll be slow um more towards nighttime cuz you do got to realize um it is technically um finally catching the traction of, of like YouTubers and stuff. So we're kind of speaking out on it. So you're not going to have the same activity as you would usually have in Rogue 30, but that's quickly changing uh, more and more people daily are, are joining in and I'm starting to notice a big difference um, that's one problem another problem is as far as shotguns go shotguns do still hurt um, are they anywhere near as powerful as far as gameplay um, in rogue or in uh, DZ 30 no um, without a doubt shotguns are okay um, and that's because they can't heal so that that reload actually punishes them you're able to actually put bullets into them without having to worry about their health going back up. That's a big difference, and that's kind of one of the main advantages that shotguns had. So you'll see right here, um, one of the first weapons I got off the bat was the God Roll shotgun, so I got to try it out. Um, you'll see right here where I kind of just say, okay, let me just try this out while I can. And usually striker is like two tap, what it feels like after you get your stacks. But you can see right here, it still does damage, but nowhere near um, what you're used to. You see, I don't have the heal. Um, I was running two actually, so you can see double the power. And look, it's not that bad. So as far as shotguns, people who have to worry about Cronus users and stuff, yes, it still will hurt. Will they have the same effect as they did um, in a regular DZ? Not even close. Um, what makes Cronus OP is the fact that the damage gets insane and the healing. But as far as the damage for this, it does hit hard, but not hard enough where if you're a good player, it's game breaking. So don't worry about that. You don't have to worry about Predator Bleed. That's gone. You don't have to worry about Proc and a Nomad. That's gone. You don't have to worry about people basically feeling immortal because they have surreal heals. That's gone. Um, if you are a healer, you will feel like a healer. You will get melted like a healer. You can't do no damage. Um, so it's kind of like way, way, way different compared to the healer builds that you come across um, in the regular DZ, um, being that they're able to melt and be able to survive and be able to heal at the same time. That's not the case because you do not get no crazy buffs. Uh, most people are running the same old, same old, which is basically a vigorous chest piece and whatever else that they want to do. Um, you're getting no buffs from your knee pads because all the high-end knee pads do nothing for you. You don't get anything outrageous. And a lot of people did the lazy way like I did, and they only have one ult. Like, I only have a recovery link. I, I can't switch in between the two. So you might catch people who went the long way and kind of got everything done. But for the most part, um, everything is pretty much on evil on equal playing grounds um you will have to farm um you have to get level 20 in the dz to buy a vendor build and that's what i call it i call it a vendor build and everybody else calls it because you can get a full high-end build once you're level 20 um in the dz you go to all the vendors and buy it um and make sure you buy uh all your gear when you get level 29 outworld just so that you have somewhat of a, of a fighting chance in the dz 
Um, as far as optimizing, it's the same. Um, unfortunately, when you optimize, it will cost 50 division tech. So it's the same as optimizing um, a gear set. So make sure that you know what you're doing. If you really want to commit to this new wave, um, that's something you have to look out for. Um, as far as uh, the community itself, I'm not going to call it toxic. Not just yet, but it does feel a lot less um, aggravating. And the reason I say that is obviously because all the things that are not in play anymore. Um, the Cronus Max shotgun striker combo is not in here. Um, the Pred Bleed is not going to be in here. The Nomad is not going to be in here. Um, un super annoying turrets are not going to be in here. Uh, crazy healer reclaimers are not going to be in here. Um, none of that stuff. So you don't have to worry about none of that stuff. Uh, you may be hit every now and then with a sticky bomb. And yes, sticky bombs are pretty viable in this only because taking off health is super important in this bracket because of most people don't have an amazing heal and most people don't have survivability after their heals are gone. So once you lose your heal, um, that's pretty much you're, you're done unless you have your ult, just like the old days. So um, you don't have to backpack and worry about people having crazy uh, survivability outside of their heals, which is one of the big things that Rogue 30 had to deal with. So that's pretty cool. So time to kill is definitely faster if you have a good, good, good uh, setup. So another thing, what weapons are viable? I know people are going to ask this. Well, does this mean I can use my AUG and Vector that I never got to use? Yes, I'm telling you right now, um, I went off with a Vector. Um, if, if you watch my stream, you guys saw it. Um, and they, I don't know if they still are, but they were selling a God roll vector. So if you want to use a vector, you can definitely use a vector. You can use an AUG, you can use an M4, Lavoa. Of course, there's going to be the best of the best of eventually. You know, there's always metas created within any game type we have. And um, honestly, it's pretty much the same thing. Uh, to me, it's going to be the MP5 and the M4 combo. That's going to be possibly the best in slot as far as weapon. But you can definitely get kills with vector. Not like um, in Rogue... I'm going to just call it Rogue 30. Not like in the regular Rogue where if you even try to kill somebody with a vector, it'll take 10 years. That's not the case with this, and that's going to be really cool, um, especially when more people get in. Um, glitches. So there are two things that do plague Rogue 29. I'm not going to put too much emphasis on them because I don't want to be widespread. But if you come across something where you feel someone is super, super strong, there's a reason behind it. Uh, I'm not going to say how, why, what to do. But just know that that is actually something to look out for, just to give you guys a heads up so you're not 100% confused. Um, and yeah, so my favorite things about it is, one, farming is actually fun again. Um, when you go up, don't farm in lower DZs. It's pointless. I'm going to tell you why in a second. But farming does feel like the old days. When you see something on the floor, it's going to be exciting to pick it up. You know, you want to look, make sure it's God roll because you do have to spend... Um, Phoenix credits and you do have to spend division tech to optimize so anything you pick up in the dz that's gold is going to be worth using whether it's a weapon whether it's a um, armor piece whatever so make sure that you look out for that and the reason i want you to farm in the upper dz's six seven eight whatever is because the bosses guaranteed drop a high end which is a guaranteed chance at getting something you need and plus if you clear landmarks you also get a high end directly into your bag which is super important because you don't have to worry about trying to extract it because everybody's trying to farm and get that god roll mp5 or god roll m4 or god roll vigorous chest savage gloves um nimble holster you know and yeah, i can go on uh so if you are ever confused on what people is running that's pretty much 99 percent of the time that's what they're gonna be running so if you want to counter towards that sure you can do that but just know that there's nothing too outlandish in this dz and it's pretty much fun man it's clean fun pvp um this is the closest you're gonna get back uh to the old days 1.3 1.4 whatever uh, this this is it. You know what I'm saying? It's it's not a mandatory. You don't have to do it. But I definitely do recommend it to the people who are tired of the type of PvP that they've been doing. Because at the end of the day, uh, what made you fall in love with the game was the bare bones version of Division. And this is definitely a bare bones version. This is as bare bones as you're going to get um, ever. You know what I'm saying? Um, I, I wish I knew about this earlier. This was brought up by TDT, which is the, the dream team, I believe. They have a Facebook group. Make sure you go check that out, get more details, link up with people to farm. Because right now, I, I'll consider it um, the farming phase 
of Rogue 29. Right now, everybody's getting their gear together, and then it's going to start popping off crazy. It is popping off right now. Don't get me wrong. You're not going to go to DZ. You're going to come across some kids who've been in there, and they know what they're doing. But for the most part, this is the farming phase, so this is possibly the best time for you to get into it. It's not too late. And, uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in Rogue 29. Stay tuned for more gameplay on it. It's been real. Hopefully, you guys enjoy it, man. Rogue 29 is the truth ever. It's your boy, and I'm out.